Internet Report, where we uncover what's working and what's breaking on the Internet and why. This was a pretty quiet week this past week. Not a lot was going on. We had a few issues. Uh, one of the things that we noticed was uh, some user complaints around Reddit. This happened on the 29th, right? And a few hours, right, where there was some errors, some um, unusually high number of errors uh, for people connecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so it lasted for about three hours from 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time to about 12.30. Um, Reddit acknowledged the issue and, and resolved it pretty quickly. That was uh, the first outage of the week. Um, I think the and more then, interesting one yeah. was the uh, outage on Sunday, and this was uh, to Telstra's DNS service. Yeah, so it seemed we're still, we still don't have a full um, RCA or root cause analysis for this outage. Initially, Telstra was saying that this was some kind of massive DDoS attack on their, on their DNS. Um, and then they walked that back and said that it seemed to be some issue um, just with uh, their DNS service. It's not clear if it's an internal issue or if it was some kind of um, flooding of traffic that maybe was non-malicious. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more information on that that we can share. Um, but we do know that, you know, given that this was a DNS issue, if you had a secondary DNS set up in your mm -hmm. system preferences, or if you were, um, if you changed your DNS provider to say Google like Quad 8 or Cloudflare Quad 1, mm -hmm. then there, that would have fixed your issue. So it wasn't a, sort of a catastrophic thing and it seemed to have resolved itself fairly quickly. Um, right, so yeah. Stay tuned on that one. Um, but we did have a bigger outage um, closer to home and also in Europe. So this was something that impacted Cogent's network. We saw some of the um, symptoms of this in San Francisco, but also um, more broadly in parts of Europe. So Germany, UK, yep. Netherlands, um, and that showed up uh, in some really interesting ways because it was pretty big, right? Yeah, right, exactly. So let's go under the hood with um, this cogent outage right now. And there you go, this yeah. comes up. So yeah, this is, uh, when did we see this? It's, it's pretty um, late last night uh, yeah, when we saw this outage. Yeah, around 8.20 p.m. Pacific time, 11.20 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And then this would have been like around 4.20 a.m. in the UK. UK, so right. Kind of has all the hallmarks of, get, and especially given how many interfaces and how distributed this was in their network, probably they made some kind of control plane change and then mm -hmm. that impacted the availability. So it could have been a maintenance window too. Right, and, and this is interesting, um, right, Angelique, uh, especially with the, your research report coming out tomorrow, there's a lot that you talk about in terms of how to characterize the impact of an outage uh, by understanding when it's happening. And some of the things that we've been seeing over the last few months uh, post-COVID, uh, a lot of these outages fall in these like, you know, interesting maintenance right, right. windows. So Yeah, uh, that's, that's right. Um, so we talk a little bit about, you know, the different characteristics of an outage and how those can point to what the underlying uh, cause of the outage is. Mm -hmm. um, and that seemed to be something that we noticed over the last few months was that uh, there's, there seemed to be many more outages that were related to providers making changes to their network, which makes a lot of sense given um, all of the accommodations they would have had to make for different types of traffic, um, where where users were sitting, whether that be um, the consumer network, uh, for example. So lots of really interesting stuff to um, to take away from that report, and that will be available tomorrow to download. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the other outage that we wanted to you know talk about, and this didn't happen this week. Uh, I guess this was a couple of weeks ago um, when we saw Cloudflare's um, DNS yeah. service that was impacted. And, you know, Cloudflare came out, um, you know, in, in you know, classic style. They were really transparent in terms of what happened. Turned out it was a, an internal um, BGP misconfiguration right. on their router, which impacted their uh, DNS backbone. 
So it took down their, um, you know, DNS v4, v6 servers as well, and also impacted yeah. some of their edge services. Um, so did we, did we do a deep dive on what we saw in, in our um, episode a couple of weeks ago, but we wanted to come back and revisit yeah. one of the questions that we had during that um, episode, Stu. Right. 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 Like, yeah. We had kind of posed this question, um, you know, just kind of in an open-ended way because we noticed that there was a, a route change um, you know, right around the time that the issue was being resolved, which seemed kind of odd to us. We thought mm -hmm. like, you know, in the midst of, of dealing with this major outage, why would there suddenly be an announcement change where they would suddenly start um, announcing through Cogent versus directly through this other provider? Right. But, the yeah. interesting thing was it was kind of at the tail end as, as the outage was recovering, we saw this, you know, um, BGP, um, route change and and just to clarify for uh if you're just tuning into this episode and this view is something that you're not familiar with um this is a external bgp um you know um, route advertisement and and the cloudflare issue at that particular time two weeks ago was an internal uh, bgp right. issue right right so we were sort of wondering about this and then after kind of discussing it a little bit more we thought actually this could very well be that this particular provider aisg made the actual change yeah um, and this is not uncommon whether you're an enterprise or you're a provider where if you're one of your peers um, that you're connected to um, you find that traffic going to a particular service it could be cloudflare it could be for example a cloud provider like aws or azure if you're not able to um, uh, like route traffic that way or, or the traffic that you're sending that way is getting dropped or there's some major systemic issue, you might then change how you're routing traffic so that you can effectively go around the issue. So it's likely, especially given that this was across a variety of Cloudflare DNS services, not just Quad One, but also um, you know traffic that was going through uh, to their, um, uh, not just the resolver, but the hosting service, as well as the root servers, that that all got changed as well. Right, right. And, you know, given how we saw this manifest, right, we saw like, you know, a severe like packet loss right yeah. before entering Cloudflare's network. So it, it feels probable that this provider ASG thought there might be a better way to reach Cloudflare. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, in this particular case, there wasn't. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, it's it's interesting because like it's hard. It's sometimes hard to tell because like with because the Cloudflare's DNS service is in any casted service. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you're just sending it through to another provider, you know, because of just how any casting works, works, it could be that you are you would be able to get around the issue and get routed to a different pop. Um, which was interesting because like there, we did see in some service providers around that time where um, I think it was like Dallas or, or something like that, where, where using a particular service provider, they were routing folks to like Houston. And because mm -hmm. of that, like those users in Dallas were able we're to get the Podflare also, service, but others weren't. Also, this issue impacted 50% of their backbone. So not all their pops were right. impacted. They, they have a list of pops that were impacted. So you're right, like, because it's any cast, if it hit another server, um, yeah. you know, you might as well try your luck there. Yeah. So exactly makes sense in terms of withdrawing that route and and i think eight hours later the once cloudflare's rca came out you know this this aisg provider basically went back to peering directly with um, exactly uh, exactly yeah, yeah. anyways yeah. all right um i think that's all we have for um today's yeah. show it's a short and sweet episode um yeah. so uh we'll be back in full force next week and I, I think we have some great uh we have at least one great speaker lined up for next week mm -hmm. so we're excited about that and uh don't forget to download uh the internet report which is going to be released tomorrow and subscribe yep yeah don't forget to subscribe especially if you want that t-shirt um internet report at thousand eyes.com um all right, well, that we'll see you guys next week.